right now, Ukrainians looking for a temporary home in America can submit applications online through President Joe Biden's new initiative, Uniting for Ukraine. The plan allows for 100,000 Ukrainians to stay up to two years. With more on this, Chris Vignaraja, President and CEO of the Lutheran Immigration and Refugee Service. She joins us now. Good morning to you. Great to see you. Good morning. Talk us through this. What are the details behind this new program? So it's important to recognize what this program does and does not do. Um, it does allow for American citizens, institutions, to sponsor Ukrainians through a program that tends to be faster than the formal refugee process. And that's helpful because, you know, we at LIRS have resettled one quarter of the Ukrainian refugees who've come in the last decade. And we hear every day from family who are desperate to get their, fam their family out. But the program doesn't provide lasting protection or any formal assistance. So it only permits up to two years of temporary residence, which works for those who plan to return home, but others can't return home. They'd be returning to rubble. And those families will need to stay permanently. And Jen, I think it's also important to stress that this program does not provide any benefits or assistance that other refugees would get. And that's important because that's things like housing assistance, health care, employment services. Which is where your service comes in and, and helps a lot of these people who are, who are displaced. Now, Ukrainians looking to resettle here in the States will undergo security checks, COVID-19 health screenings. What's included in the screening process and what precautions uh, is the U.S. taking to make sure only Ukrainians who were displaced by the war are coming in into the U.S.? That's obviously critically important. Um, DHS has said that Ukrainians must have been residents in Ukraine as of February 11th um, of this year. Uh, they have to be. They have to have a sponsor in the U.S. Uh, they do have to complete vaccinations and other public health requirements. And then they'll go through rigorous biometric screening and security checks. Um, it's our understanding that these checks will mirror those of the refugee program. So they're going to be conducted by both international and U.S. intelligence agencies, including uh, the FBI, CIA, others. And I think it's also just worth mentioning that, you know, 90 percent of the refugees coming out of Ukraine are women and children. So we expect that that is the population that will come to the U.S. And DHS also urging Ukrainians to refrain from traveling to Mexico in order to enter the U.S. DHS actually released a statement saying, quote, following the launch of Uniting for Ukraine, Ukrainians who present at land U.S. ports of entry without a valid visa or without pre-authorization to travel to the United States through Uniting for Ukraine will be denied entry and referred to apply through the program. So what is the plan for those Ukrainians who show up at the border and are not part of the program? Will they be forced to remain in Mexico? That's what we believe will be the case um, starting yesterday. Um, the administration has been quite clear uh, that they will no longer exempt Ukrainians who are trying to exercise what we believe is a legal right to seek asylum at the southern border. Um, in fact, yesterday, the Mexican government suspended its special shelters and bus lines for Ukrainians crossing into the U.S. So, Chris, what's your advice to the Biden administration in the beginning stages of this program? What would you like to see implemented? Well, I'd say let's do more to help these Ukrainian women and children seeking refuge here in the U.S. And we can look to our history and to our allies to say what that looks like. Um, other countries like Canada and Australia have launched programs where they are providing refugees with robust services here in the U.S. We've done a similar thing when it came to Kosovars who were fleeing ethnic cleansing in 1999 when we provided essential services. It's the same approach we did with our Afghan allies last year. Um, I think it's really important that we make sure that these families, these children, get the support they need. And while the sponsorship is valuable, we also need to provide them a formal support program. Krish Vignaraja, we appreciate you joining us this morning here on the National Desk. Great to see you as always. Have a good one. Thanks for having me.